Hello, my name is David, and I'll be taking you through this webinar. Before we continue to the practical examples, let's talk about what is behavior-driven development and why we need it and its benefits over test-driven development. Behavior-driven development is a software development process that promotes collaboration between developers, quality assurance teams, and the non-technical or business participants in a software project. It encourages the teams to use conversations and concrete examples to formalize how an application should behave. Behavior-driven development offers a lot of benefits over test-driven development, such as more precise guidance on organizing the conversation between the developers, quality assurance, and business participants of a software project, easy to update as a project and product changes, as plain language is much simpler to edit and make changes in automation safer, Scenarios also become easier and faster to write and automate as more step definitions are added. Scenarios most of the time share common steps and new scenarios might not need anything else other than a simple change or replacing a parameter in some step definition. Let's also talk about how test project comes into a picture. Test project is a free automation platform for web and mobile applications, including RESTful APIs. Test project is divided into two parts, the cloud-based platform and the local-based test project agent. The agent is a powerful wrapper for Selenium and Appium and just needs to be locally installed. It'll set up your correct drivers for Selenium tests and will even set up an Appium server for you for mobile automation. Using the agent, you can even test iOS on Windows. The agent will automatically detect all connected devices and emulators or iOS simulators. The second part of the platform is the test project cloud, which is used for management purposes. It will store your reports, screenshots, recorded tests, coded tests, and will allow you to easily collaborate with your teammates. Another important part, which actually contains the plugins for behavior-driven development, is the test project OpenSDK, available for c -sharp, Java, and Python. In this webinar, we'll be discussing only Java and Python, as there has been already been a webinar for c -sharp and SpyFlow separately a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's important to note that the OpenSDK is 100% open source and available on GitHub in the official test project repository and will work with the agent to create automatic reports for you on the test project cloud. It will report your automatic Selenium uh, and Appium driver commands, including uh, behave uh, Gherkin syntax if you're using the plugins, and even your assertion errors for test in G and JUnit. In this graph, you can basically see a example of the workflow. You'll be working locally with your IDE by utilizing the test project open SDKs which will communicate with the agent to get the correct driver for your browser and set up the Appium server for your mobile device, and will report the tests to the test project cloud, where you'll be able to view our test reports. First, we'll start with a practical example of Behave using the test project Python OpenSDK, and then we'll move on to a practical example with Cucumber and the test project Java OpenSDK. Let's head to the test project platform. In the integration section, you can get your developer token, which we will cover later on, and you can find how to install the SDKs. For Java, you can install the Python Open SDK. Sorry, for uh, Python, you can install the Python Open SDK using the following pip command. The Python Open SDK is available as a PyPy package. So let's head over to PyCharm. So the first thing you'll need to do, as I mentioned, is install the Python OpenSDK and then install behave, which you can do with pip install behave. I already have both of them installed here, so we'll be skipping this. Uh, here, I created a simple login and validation flow. Uh, I created a feature file, which you can see I have highlighted syntax here because I've installed the PyCharm uh, Gherkin syntax plugin, which you can also install through the plugin section in the IDE. 
Here, I basically have three steps, navigating to a certain page, performing a login, and then performing a validation. In my step implementations, I'm using the driver I stored in the context object to navigate to the URL, find the elements, and then perform the actions, and then search for an element, and then check if it's displayed or not. To enable the Gherkin syntax reporting in the Python Open SDK, you'll need to use the behave reporter annotation in your environment Py file. Uh, behave offers an, a way to create hooks for your feature file executions in, in a file called environment uh, Py. So here I created several hooks before all, which will be executed before all features after step will be executed after a certain step and after scenario which is executed after each scenario and after all which is executed after all the features so what i'm doing here is in the before all i'm creating my driver as you can see the driver is coming from the test project dependency and not from the selenium one and i'm specifying my token which is basically necessary to communicate with your agent I'm specifying the project name where the report will be stored on the test project platform and the job name, which is going to be the name of this execution in the report. And I'm using the behave reporter annotate uh, decorator as it's called in Python. And here you can see the import statement where to find the decorator. You'll need to decorate the method you use to construct your driver and then decorate the after step and after scenario hooks. And also enable screenshots with the screenshot equal true parameter into the decorator. And in the after all, I'm just quitting the driver to close the Selenium session. To run the test and see the report on test project, you have a few options. One of them is using the behave command, which will search for a features directory at the top level of your project and execute it. Uh, and you can also specify a path here if you chose to place your features in a different directory. For example, path to feature. Some IDEs like uh, PyCharm Pro also give the option of creating a run configuration for behave. So you'll be able to see it here if you're using it. So let's run the tests. The execution will be started by my local agent. As you can see, it opened the browser. It got the correct driver for my version of Chrome. And now it'll execute the test. It'll log in to the, uh, to the page and then just perform the validation. As you can see, my test failed because an element was not found, which is here, because I use an invalid CSS selector. Logout do not exist. So if I go to test project in the reports, you can see that login scenario was indeed reported a few seconds ago. As you can see, it's stored in behave tests for project I specified. And this is the name of the job I specified, and this is my execution. As you can see, each step was reported, including a screenshot. Let's open step three, and we can see a detailed message why the step failed, because an element was not found. If you are viewing the reports on test project, you can also generate either a summary or full PDF report. And the reports will also include the screenshots from the executions. And on test project, you can also view velocity reports and statistics of all your executions. This is very useful if you need to keep track of what's going on in your software project. As you can see, you can also view built-in velocity reports as well. Now let's move on to the Java example. To install the Java Open SDK, you just need to add the dependency to your project. Uh, even 
if you're if you're using Maven, you can just add it to your POM XML, or if you're using Gradle, just your build Gradle file. Um, the dependency is available from the test project integrations page. It's um, on the Maven repository. It's always recommended to use the latest version. So as you can see, this is the Maven dependency and this is the Gradle one. So let's move over to IntelliJ. Here we can see my build Gradle file. It includes the test project uh, open SDK. It also includes JUnit for testing and the Cucumber JUnit for the Cucumber options annotation and the test project uh, and sorry and uh, LS4J for viewing the test project internal logging, uh, which isn't really necessary for your project. Uh, here I created another simple login flow, which is very similar to the Python one. Just instead here, we have an and step, which will quit the driver. So once again, I'm going to navigate to a page, perform a login, and then perform a validation that a certain button appears. These are my step definitions. As you can see, I've created a Chrome driver for this test. And once again, I've created it using my developer token, which again, you can place in an environment variable to avoid having to uh, keep using it in all your tests. I specify keep reusing it each time I create a driver. And again, specifying the project name where it's going to be saved and the execution name as well. I'm specifying an implicit weight of uh, one and a half seconds. And inside the same step, we're going, I'm going to be navigating to the test project example page. Once again, here I'm performing a login and then a validation and finally quitting the driver. The difference between the plugins for Python and Java is that in Java, it's an actual plugin inside the SDK as opposed to a decorator. You'll need to use the plugin. One of the options is just specifying it as a plugin in your run configuration, or uh, the way I'm going to be using it here is by specifying the plugin in my Cucumber options annotation which is coming from Cucumber JUnit. Here, as you can see, I'm specifying the package path to the Cucumber reporter. And here I'm specifying the absolute path to my features directory, which is in my test resources. So now let's run the test. And once again, it will be executed by my local test project agent, but in this case, it should pass since I'm not uh, trying to locate any elements which don't appear on the page. As we can see, once again, the agent opened the browser window, pulled the correct driver for my uh, browser version, and will be navigating to the page and executing the test. And by using the Cucumber reporter, the Gherkin syntax will be reported onto the test project platform. As we can see here, the test passed. Now, if we head over back to test project reports, we can see a past login scenario. As we can see, these are our steps in the test and they all passed. I should also specify that uh, in addition to this, you can also specify the plugin inside your build Gradle file. That's the third option. It's also important to mention that you, um, you can also perform, as I mentioned previously, because the agent takes care of setting up an Appium server for you, you can also create mobile tests using the SDK and create mobile behavior driven development tests as well. All you need to do is just use the mobile driver uh, from the test project dependency from the test project SDK. 
For example, you can use the Android driver or even on Windows, you can use the iOS driver as well, by that you set up the iOS settings in your test project account. Another thing that I can mention is that for non-UI, non-functional UI tests, for example, such as unit tests or uh, API tests, you can use the test project generic driver, which exists for this purpose. The generic driver um, can be used to create reports. Uh, if you're using the uh, one of the plugins, you'll need an active driver session. But if you're not doing a UI test, you can just create a generic driver to overcome that. And you can also, in addition to the reporting here, you can also report manually using the the built-in reporting inside the driver itself. So let's say I'm using some kind of other framework and I'd like to create my own reporting dashboard. I can just use the reporting from the driver itself to report steps um, and even tests themselves. 